Is the shine finally off the apple? Has Apple began that long, slow road towards decline? Well, I'll give you my take right after this. Hey, I'm Bruce Naylor, and this is another installment of Bruce's Take, formerly known as Frugal's Take. Thank you so much for watching my video. Always enjoy your comments down below. This is a video that I've wanted to make for the last couple of weeks and just I haven't got around to it and uh, but I thought I would you know uh, Apple last month released their second quarter results uh, I think that ran January through the end of March and they they made it just a buttload of money but they didn't meet Wall Street's expectations here's some figures for you uh, they had a drop in revenue by 10% in the U.S., 26% in China. iPhones uh, dropped in sales by 6%. I iPads, a eye-popping 19%. This is year over year. And Macs down 12.39%. What else is wrong? Well, let's see. The majority of the Mac lineup is over a year old. The Mac Pro hasn't been updated in three years. The bright spot is, is that their services revenue is up 20%. So let's talk about Apple for a few minutes, shall we? And I, uh, typically when I make videos talking about Apple, I always get, you know, the haters in the comments who have nothing good to say about Apple. And then I get some occasional fanboys that will pop in and say something but I think it's time to take a realistic analysis of Apple as a company. Now, this is a company that's got $233 billion of cash and marketable securities in hand. So they have a ton of money. And it is true that they did see a decline in revenue and a decline in sales, particularly hit hardest in China. And I would argue that no small part of that is in due to the, uh, the rise of the dollar against the Chinese currency has made Apple products a bit more expensive to purchase in China. But the reality is, all in all, if you look historically, over the last decade, if you look and compare Apple's market share and what they're doing, with the PC market share and what's happening there. I think you have to ignore this little bit of a downtrend and look at the long-term trend over the last decade. And I think some of this speaks volumes for where Apple is out. Apple has consistently outperformed the PC market for quite some time now. I've got a few facts here backed up by research with Gartner, which is one of the most respected survey uh, marketing companies uh, in the world. So let's go there. Uh, the average Mac price right now is $1,200 as a Mac computer. And that market is growing in a world dominated by uh, PCs, many of them being sold for under $400. Now, the thing is, the PC market is now selling at the levels it hasn't seen since 2008. In other words, down. They're not really growing, as a matter of fact. Uh, just a tiny smidge in the last 10 years where Apple's revenue from computing devices, as their phones or tablets or Macs, has grown six times in the last de decade, or 6x, the world of PC devices has only grown by 0.60%. It's a huge difference right there. And furthermore, whatever Microsoft and Intel try to do to revive a stagnant PC market, you know, they pinned their hopes on Windows 7. Nope. Let's try Windows 8. Nope. Let's try Windows 10. Nope. Let's try two ones with the Surface. Certainly. That'll help us. Well, as soon as the iPad Pro hit, it started out selling Surface by no small measure. 
Let's talk about the phone business for just a, a minute. Apple sold 51 million phones versus the 81 million sold by Samsung because Samsung is, I think a lot of people think of them as a direct competitor to Apple. However, the bulk of their money wasn't made on their flagship phone, the Galaxy 7S, for example, but rather on much cheaper phones with much smaller margin. In other words, approximately only about 9 million flagship got, uh, phones got sold compared to Apple's 51 million phones. There is no doubt, and I think in my mind, that Apple has reached a certain point of saturation in the U.S. market. Here's the thing. Apple sells really well in the U.S., China, and a few other markets, but on a global scale, it doesn't have the market play, market share that Android devices do, or even Windows PCs do, for that matter. But in their dominant markets, they truly do dominate. And furthermore, Apple has done a great job of coming in the market and changing the game. Case in point, let's take netbooks. Netbooks were beginning to eat away at laptop sales and uh, in the marketplace. Apple didn't go down that path and come out with a $300 netbook type device. They came out with the iPad and basically took, I mean, they didn't invent tablet computers, okay? But they put their own unique recipe together and came out with a monster success. Now, to be fair, Apple has been, iPads have been declining in sales for the last couple years. However, they're still dominating when it comes to the world of tablets. They still are the dominant factor in the U.S. Um, as far as tablet sales are concerned. So uh, we will see what happens with their tablet business. What about the Apple Watch? I personally, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not big into wearables. I don't, they're not for me. But since the introduction of the Apple Watch, Apple has now basically taken all the profit out of the wearables market with the Apple Watch. Here's my take. Uh, Apple is not in a state of decline at the current moment. They've got plenty of money and a lot of opportunity and a healthy pipeline of products that I'm sure will continue to see them do very, very well into the foreseeable future. There are some things that they're doing as a company that does raise some eyebrows and con some concerns. Part of the problem of declining Mac sales can be blamed squarely on the fact that Apple has an unusually long refresh cycle in its product line. The average Mac computer right now has been on the market for at least a year without a refresh. The Mac Pro, over three years now since it first was introduced. That is too, too long. Apple definitely needs to step up its game on its product refresh cycle. Yes, iPhones are probably about at the saturation point in the U.S., and now it's a more mature market. It's more of a replacement cycle, and I'm sure that when the iPhone 7 is introduced, we'll see some eye-popping numbers coming back on the iPhone market. Now, as far as China is concerned, I think Apple is working on bringing in, you know, they came out with a less expensive iPhone, but there's certain things that are not in within its control. We'll see how the Chinese market rebounds for Apple. And yes, I think ultimately Apple has spent a lot of its resources and time um, dealing with iOS and its services and devices such as the iPhone and the iPad uh, and so forth. But I do believe it's time to get back to the Mac. Don't forget where it took you to the dance to begin with. Let's start seeing some more innovation in Mac computers and the software. I remember the heady days of the launch of iTunes iMovie, iLife, it's time to reinvigorate that market somewhat. And I think Apple will once again shine that, that gloss will be back on the Apple. That is my take. I would like to hear your comments down below. Bruce Naylor, take care. Until the next one, everybody.